Okay, we have today a tricky integral from the MIT integration B 2024 semifinals round one problem one. We have the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x cubed minus 4x sine x plus 3x squared minus 4 times cos x over x cubed minus 4x squared plus cosine squared x dx. Okay, now to get started with this, the main problem I really had was with the bounds. Trying to get this indefinite integral is actually not too bad. But it turns out evaluating the bounds is a problem. So what I'm going to do first is let's just see if I can do the indefinite integral and then kind of let's come back and try to evaluate it later. So what I notice first with this is in the numerator, if you take the derivative of x cubed minus 4x, you have the derivative right here. If you take the derivative of cosine, you almost have sine, it's minus sine. So I was thinking maybe reverse product rule would work on that and that's kind of where I started going down the wrong road because that didn't really work because of what we have in the denominator. So I had to give up on that idea and I went to the common trick instead of just multiplying by secant squared x over secant squared x. So if I distribute this in and rewrite everything, what's going to happen is first, so first in the numerator when we rewrite this, if I take one copy of secant and multiply it times sine, that's just going to be tan of x. And then we'll have the other copy of secant x that I'll write like this. And then next, when you multiply secant squared times cosine, one of the cosines is going to cancel, and then we're just going to be left here with secant x. And then when we multiply into the denominator on the first one here, on the cosine, cosine squared times secant squared, that's just going to be 1. And then for this other part, we'll just multiply in secant squared here. But then because we have both these terms squared, what I want to do is... Let's just kind of combine these under one exponent so I can write it all together like this. So this is all squared. And then at this point, what I can do is just a u substitution on this because you'll notice the derivative of secant x is going to be right here. And the derivative of x cubed minus 4x, that's just going to be the 3x squared minus 4. So this is going to work out pretty nice. So we'll do this. So this is going to work pretty well with product rule. So I'm going to do, we'll do the substitution for all this stuff. And then I'll take the derivative with product rule we'll do. So first the derivative of this part right here is going to be 3x squared minus 4 times secant x. And then the second part we're just going to bring down x cubed minus 4x. Derivative of secant is secant x tan x dx. So now what just happened is the whole numerator here, all this stuff is going to be just the du. And so I'll go ahead and substitute and then the whole thing just simplifies down to du this becomes u squared plus 1. We know how to do this. This is just arctan. So integrating here, we get arctan of u. Back substitute it. And what we get is arctan of x cubed minus 4x times secant x. And for the indefinite integral, I can just add the plus c in there. And that's going to be our answer to the indefinite integral. Now getting back to what we really want though, this is nice, but we want this from minus infinity to infinity. Well, the trouble is if I just go ahead with this and try to evaluate the bounds, let's say in theory we could do this and just evaluate from minus infinity to infinity. The problem we have now is there's a bunch of discontinuities because of the secant right here. Because every time you go to pi over two, three pi over two, any with any of those values, cosine is zero, you're dividing by zero, all those points are going to be a problem. But also it's kind of a problem evaluating at infinity and minus infinity because when you evaluate this part when x is going to infinity, this part's also going to be going to infinity. If you evaluate the limit of secant x as x is going to infinity, this limit doesn't exist because it's going to positive and negative values and it's bouncing back and forth. So you really can't approach it this way because there's too many problems. You really need to break this up and look at it a different way. And so now what I'll do is just kind of backtrack to like our second step here. And I have, I put the bounds back. So we're going from minus infinity to infinity. And to save myself writing this over and over again, let's call this whole thing here f of x. Then from here, let's see if I can break it up on all these discontinuities dealing with our secant x. We said that it's going to be a problem at like all of our multiples of pi over 2. But now for this first one, if you look at a graph of the original function, you can kind of see that everything's happening in the middle between minus 3 pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, and then really off going to infinity. And then when you look at this going off to positive or negative infinity, it's going off quickly to zero. So I'm going to try to group those values together. So like 
I'm going to break this up from minus infinity to minus 3 pi over 2. And just notice in this region, we're still going to have a bunch of discontinuities and problems. So I'm not saying this is going to still be a problem, but I'm going to just leave it for now because I really want to focus on getting the value of some of these middle integrals or like the middle of the, the curve. So like for this next one, I'll go from minus 3 pi over 2 to minus pi over 2. Then for this next one, I'm going to go from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. And I think I'm going to run out of space pretty fast here. Let's see, we have one from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. Even just using f of x, I still ran out of space. And then let's put this last one over here. So for this last integral, it's going from 3 pi over 2 to infinity. And again, this one's going to be just like this one. It'll still have some discontinuities in it. And then I erased the board, but our u substitution, our u substitution again was for this. Now focusing on, let's start with this integral right here. If you do the u substitution on this one, when you plug in minus pi over 2 here, I know it's a little complicated, but what actually happens with the upper bound, it's going to be going to minus infinity. Because in each of these cases, the secant value is going to be going to infinity. In this case, it's going to minus infinity, and this part's going to just some positive value. So then we get minus infinity for the upper bound. At minus 3 pi over 2, the opposite's happening. If you look at that, this value is going to infinity. When we do our u substitution, we get the same thing we had before, which was just this thing, du over u squared plus 1. Then let's see what happens when we integrate. Of course, we get arctan of u evaluated from... I could actually switch this right. We could bring a minus sign up front and then write it this way. So we could have minus arctan of u and then evaluate it for minus infinity to infinity. This is going to be pi over 2 minus negative pi over 2 minus times minus is plus. This is going to be a pi, but I forgot my minus sign here, right? So bring in the minus, we get minus pi. So let me just put this value minus pi on this one. Then going on to this one and doing the exact same thing, what's going to happen when we're going to pi over 2, secant is going to positive infinity. This is going to be a negative value. So again, we're going to have minus infinity for the upper bound. On the other side, minus pi over 2. Again, this is positive infinity, but the sign changes on this. And now this is going to positive infinity. But this is the exact same integral we saw before, and we know the value. This is going to be minus pi. So taking this, we'll put that on this one. This one becomes a value of minus pi. This, will, this here will work out exactly the same way, same steps, and the integral is going to be minus pi. But now here, this is where I really got stuck because at this end, like I said, if you look at the graph, you can see that this is getting really close to zero. And also when you look at what secant's doing and what x cubed minus 4x is doing, it just kind of repeats over and over again. So it makes me think that there's offsetting values here. And so everything is going to be zero. So I think, so to be honest, I don't know exactly how to value this like in a precise way to say for sure. But just from the graph and from kind of looking at it, if I make the assumption that this is zero and I make the assumption that this right here is zero, so then we can just sum up these middle three integrals and we get this solution of minus three pi. And this is the correct answer in the answer key, minus three pi. The only problem is I don't really give myself full credit because I can't really justify this part here. I mean, I can look at a graph and say, I think it's going to zero and it's a pretty good estimate, but I don't know exactly how to show that these integrals on the end, even though I can see that they're a really small value, I don't really know how to show that these are exactly zero and that everything is offsetting. So if you have a way to do these end integrals, let me know, I'd be curious if there's a way to do this exactly without just looking at the graph and saying it seems like zero. Anyway, really interesting problem from MIT 2024. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.